Good evening, and welcome aboard Ark Midnight. This is John B. Wells in the left seat of the ultimate mothership, coming to you live from space. Oh yeah, what a week. What a week it has been. And there will be one right after another until we get to the end of the line, and whenever that is, I can't wait, I really can't. It's exciting, you know, it's an exciting time to be alive, and it's an exciting program we have lined up for you tonight. We're going to speak with a very, very interesting lady, DJ Welsh. Her website is level9news.com, and use the number nine, don't spell it out. And when you go there, you'll see, well, I'll give you a hint of what, what she talks about. Convergence is one of the articles, the day after AI singularity. Gas riots in Mexico and the wall. Everything. But in particular, she was covering this exercise conducted by the U.S. military and Special Operations Command, known as Jade Helm. And uh, talked to her a couple of times on Caravan to Midnight. Caravan to Midnight at CaravanToMidnight.com is a well, I guess it's a daily program now that we have Dr. Jen uh, backing us up a little bit on uh, Mondays, but Tuesdays through Fridays, I host this program. It's a cyber-delivered TV show, and on it, we have spoken with many, many learned and uh, otherwise extraordinary people, and DJ is one of them, and she's been on a couple of times, so she's coming on tonight, and we'll, um, we're will we going to cover a few things such as, well, you know... Of course, it'll be the usual bill of fare, treachery, betrayal, Armageddon, things like that. A rogue nation nuclear threats. Banks kind of kind of deciding, much like the medical profession, when they decided, hmm, meditation seems to be helping. M- maybe some of our, our patients could benefit from meditation. And the banks are thinking, maybe our bank could benefit by getting into this blockchain thing. Of course, as these things go, <laughs> for all we know... Uh, the banks have been behind the blockchain the whole time, and nobody knew it. A unified global digital currency. And uh, oh, we'll talk about stuff uh, well, like Google developers and their deep mind, well, Google brain team, having to pull the plug on their latest version of AGI they developed. <laughs> it developed its own machine language, and instead of doing what it was supposed to, they started talking with other elements within the computer apparatus, and they went, okay. Now, they say the plug was not pulled because it, it began speaking a strange language they could not decode, and it was going to go nefarious and evil and otherwise weird on us. They said, no, 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 it just wasn't doing what we told it to do. Well, we'll find out when we talk to DJ if, if they're just uh, giving us some happy news rather than the actual news. There is some really severe news out there regarding uh, Hillary Clinton. Before I tell it to you, though, I'm checking out this website to make sure it's not, you know, it's not one of those websites that's, oh, it's just satire. We didn't mean anything by it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> that's, you did mean something by it, and you know it. Sadly, I must report something else. On the third, Thursday, in the morning, one of the pioneers, I mean the true pioneers, of what uh, people refer to now, after the expression was popularized by CIA, conspiracy theory. But this man was no conspiracy theorist. He was Jim Mars, old-school newspaper reporter, fedora and all. Not interested in spin, only interested in facts. And he passed away Thursday morning. New York Times best-selling author and all of that. And so, before we get into the greater portion of our program tonight, Let me just say, remember Jim Mars. He taught a JFK assassination course at UT Arlington for 30 years, and we were better off with him in this world. Stand by. This is Ark Midnight. You're listening to Ark Midnight with John B. Wells. Now, here is John B. Oh, yeah. It was so much fun talking about the Nazis and the submarine. It was a big one. 
U-234. <laughs> I know, you know where we're headed here, don't you? It was carrying U-235. And guess where it went? Portsmouth. And delivered uranium to the U.S. for our bomb. Absolutely unbelievable, but true. And um, don't you find that, uh, you, you know Robert Oppenheimer, pretty much the, the father of the bomb. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is so beautiful. This is my favorite quote from Robert Oppenheimer. Here it comes. It is perfectly obvious that the whole world is going to hell. The only possible chance that it might not is that we do not attempt to prevent it from doing so. And that's, that's really, we, we sort of apply the, uh, the Oppenheimer axiom to a caravan to midnight. It's like, look, the new world order is probably going to happen at some point. Seriously. Who knows, we may wind up with that. Um, I mean, it's written that we, we will accept a chip in either our hands or our forehead. And if we don't, we won't be able to buy or sell. Okay. Okay. It could happen. It's been prophesied that it will. Okay. Let's set that aside for a second. And we know that we have these rogue loonies from time to time. And even if they're not rogue loonies, somebody's making them look like rogue loonies. And so they might as well, you know, be actual bona fide rogue loonies. And uh, we're mad. We're hungry. We don't have as much dough as you do. You guys are gangsters, and we'll blow up the world. We're so upset. Okay. And then we have a definitely complicit mainstream media. Ministry of Smoke and Mirrors, I like to call it. Here's one. This has got to be real. Uh, a nice man, Mr. Ponder, sent this to me. He makes EM proof stuff and uh, one of these uh, one of these nights we'll talk to him on arc midnight but here's some from the boston globe at boston globe there it is right there and the lady who submitted this said what did he mean by this and this person from the globe has posted the path of viewing spots for this month's solar eclipse cuts overwhelmingly through places that voted for trump <laughs> Poor Mr. Trump, he cannot catch a break. You know, Mr. Trump does not need an apologist. I'm really, I'm pretty apolitical, but when I saw this, uh, some people say I'm a-everything, but not many, but some. But when it came down to this Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump thing, it was like, oh, I, I, I can't do this. I, can, I cannot not vote. So I did. And it gets up there now, it looks like McMaster's is a problem. It's very interesting. All these people are so upset at Mr. Trump. And why are they doing this? Because he's actually doing something. The illegal immigration is down. That's good. It's good for the people who are crossing illegally, and it's good for the country. Why is it good for the country? Well, out of one side of our mouths, our collective mouths, our collective mouth, Workers are worried because robots are going to take over. AI is going to run everything. And now the other side, it's we need more unskilled labor. Wait, 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 wait a minute. But I thought robots were going to take their jobs. Well, but these are, these are illegal immigrants and they need our help. Why do they need our help? Because if we don't help them, we can't get them to vote for the Democrats. Oh, gotcha. Well, that makes perfect sense in that case. Let's just roll with it. But back to Oppenheimer. Talking about these things that are going on in the world should not be used as an excuse for us to get all neurotic and then start drifting in, into a zombie-like state of denial. We shouldn't do that. Because all of this stuff is going to go the way it's going to go. As I like to say, somebody is going to be on the cover of Rolling Stone every issue. We don't know who it is. We may not even know who they are, but somebody's going to be on that cover. The evening news is never going to begin with, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's been a spectacularly peaceful day all across the world. The birds are flying. 
And when they're not flying, they're singing. They're so happy, some of them are singing as they're flying. Dogs and cats are getting along. It's beautiful. There have been no problems. So I'll tell you what, there is no news tonight. We're just going to go straight to uh, sports where everybody won. And after that, we'll have weather. And everything is a comfortable 72 degrees all across the world. Because we got that global warming under control. Now we don't have any seasons. It's all set at 72. Stand by for more entertaining information tomorrow night, because we don't really have any now. That's not going to happen. They're going to come on there, and they're going to talk about something. So we do talk all about stuff at uh, Caravan to Midnight, everything. And we talk to everybody that we possibly can. Carter Heydrich is an amazing guy, and he is the one who came on the program on Friday. Seems like the last week, but it was just like last day. And um, his book, Critical Mass, it's just, uh, it's just absolutely amazing. And then, you know, we talked with John Clausen last Saturday. And, okay, so where are you headed, Wells, with all this? I want to tell you about Caravan to Midnight. We keep this archive, 787 programs in archive right now. We went back to an interview last year, late last year, with General Michael Flynn. And it was in that interview that many people learned that he had he'd, uh, testified for about four and a half hours regarding the, the, Benghazi, the Benghazi incident, which was horrible and wrong. And this archive serves as a library of the state of analysis at the time that that interview was recorded. And speaking of 787 episodes, we're about to expand our our apparatus because if I have it my way, we'll do 787 more of them. And this extensive library will be maintained. Uh, it'll be great for uh, research. Many of these people... You've never heard of them before, but they have such enriching information to bring to the party. And why, why do we want this? We don't have to get all neurotic and weirded out about the events of the day. What we need is to know what's really happening to us. Once you know that whole fear of the unknown, what could they be doing? What, what are they planning for us? What could happen? This is a program that really can actually promote individual development of critical thinking skills. And that's really what it's all about. I mean, look, some of us are old enough to remember a movie called um, Invaders from Mars. It was really creepy to watch this thing on a black and white TV, too. And the, the weirdest part about it is I was a little boy, and there was a little boy in the movie. And his dad got uh, hijacked by the, um, by the Martians. And they, like, drill him in the back of the, back of the skull, put this thing in there, and kind of zombies him out. And the, the terror of that whole thing for kids watching it was that their dad, you know, if anybody can be relied on, it's dad. Now they don't even know who he is, and he doesn't really know who they are. He operates around them, but it's not dad anymore because the Martians got him. Well, some have suggested that something like this is happening only in reverse. It's the children that are getting weird. And they're saying that uh, this addiction to smartphones, of all things, yep, smartphones, sure enough, this is what's contributing to it. They would prefer to work with their smartphone than interact with any humans. Now, we've seen this for years. The kids are sitting at the pizza parlor, and they're texting each other. Now, somebody can say, oh, they're just having fun. Between all these distractions that we're being hit with, all the stimuli, all the time, just driving around, car horns, ambulances, people changing lanes, then the lights, the stripes, the, the signs, the billboards, the, the buildings, the signs on those, just being hit with all this, all, all these different stimuli continuously. Well, if you add that to, here, have a smartphone and distract yourself, you can do all kinds of things with that. Why would they bother with any humans? And so they drift farther and farther away. Combine this with what has happened for the last, I don't know, almost 30 years of every parent's child is special, gifted, talented, 
wonderful. There aren't enough superlatives. Just like someone's dog is the best dog ever. Let me tell you a story about my dog. Does anybody really want to hear that? About as much as they want to hear the new chord that somebody has been working on. They don't want to hear it. Have you ever had one of your friends say, hey, I got this song. It's like, really? <clears throat> and they play it, and you're like, you're listening to this, and you, you are embarrassed for them. Not only are you uncomfortable, but you're em- so embarrassed for them because they don't understand how bad this music is. And you just want to do that John Belushi thing, you know, in an animal house where he just grabs the guitar and slams it back and forth on both sides of the hallway and then goes, sorry. <laughs> well, that's what's happening to us. We're disconnecting. Maybe it's a defense mechanism, as they used to call it in the old transactional analysis days of psychology. Everybody at college had to take psychology for at least one semester, and you wind up psychoanalyzing yourself, which is not its not a good idea. i got a creepy one for you. You've, you've probably heard something like um, from a ghost town in the middle of uh, uh, Bravo Foxtrot Echo and in, in a cornfield that's been scorched by UFOs. Listen to this. <clears throat> now, this is one creepy news story. And it has all these conspiracy theorists excited and enthralled. Yes, reportedly there's a mysterious radio station in Russia that is still broadcasting sounds and code words, and nobody seems to be running the thing. No wonder it's being termed as a ghostly radio station. (laughs) The station's been dubbed by, it's been dubbed the buzzer. It's broadcasting these strange code words. It's probably a number station. Uh, they they broadcast these numbers randomly and, and, you know, activate sleepers. So that's left over from the Cold War era. And this thing occasionally emits cryptic droning sounds. It's believed the station started broadcasting these interesting messages in the 70s, while the first recording was transmitted in 1983. Usually only low buzzing hum, droning sound, and the sound of a ship's foghorn blast is audible, but once or twice a week... Transmission shifts into male and female voices, reading out random codes, words, number patterns, and even Russian names. Dinghy, or farming specialist, are some of the words transmitted in Russian by the station. And according to Wired, the signal was said to emanate from the grounds of a mini-military city of Voyenigorodok, near the village of Puvorovo. And very rarely, perhaps once every few weeks, the monotony was broken by a male voice reciting brief sequences of numbers and words, often in, often strings of Russian names. But anyway, some believe it's a dead hand signal that will be used to launch automatic retaliatory attacks on attackers if Russia receives a nuclear strike. But who knows? Very strange. All righty then. Wow, that was a quick few minutes. Night's going to go quick, so let's soak it up. In just a few minutes, we will welcome to the bridge of the Ark Midnight, DJ Welch. This is John B. Wells. Stand by. DJ's background is in system and network engineering. She departed from her career in the gaming industry in 2014 to pursue the challenge of making a difference in a world where right is wrong, up is down, truth is is lies level nine news provides a protected platform to accelerate the awakening humanity is experiencing worldwide the realization of the paradox which humanity has created in its acceleration of acquiring technology faster than the growth of its moral and ethical compass has enabled an uncontrolled proliferation of abusive powers this has made the process of controlling the natural spiritual access of consciences detached from the individual and the collective species. This has compelled DJ to explore solutions which can be accessible to everybody and anybody who's willing to receive knowledge with unfeigned guidance. And we're going to talk to her right now. DJ, welcome to Arc Midnight. Great to have you on. Hey, John. Thanks for having me on. Well, you kind of got that tone in your voice. Are you... Are you are you thinking what I'm thinking? You know, this this thing popped up about uh, Zuckerberg. This is from, uh, it's Liberty Brit- Blitzkrieg, and it says, Zuckerberg's recent hires tell us a lot about his worldview, and it's not good. <laughs> Stuff like that, yeah. I mean. 
Yeah, this world seems to be spinning out of control. Yes, but we are not afraid. Now, no. now do us a favor. Just bring us up to speed on when you really... Now, you've been doing this for a long time, and, and I know that you were in the gaming industry, and um, I can't remember now if you were a code writer or not, but as I, I think you were. And... Um, uh, mm-hmm. No, you go ahead. Don't be shy. No, no, I, I wasn't a code writer, but I worked in the gaming industry for 11 years. And, you know, one of the things that started to kind of like perk my interest there was we all had to go to mandatory classes to explain the psychological effect of the frequency and the light being used, um, you know, in particularly in the slot machines, not to mention all of the other, you know, factors in the casino environment that kind of rewire your neural pathways while you're you know, entrenched in that environment. And, um, you know, what we, what we learned, and we had to go to this class, I think, every year or every two years, is that people that sit in front of these slot machines, and this is what got me onto frequencies, you know, it got me very interested in how frequencies work and affect the um, human physiological body in many ways. And what we were trained is that the light emissions and the flicker rate coming off those machines acts on the brain insofar as releasing um, uh, a drug, um, a chemical in, in, in the brain that mimics Valium. So, you know, like, like a drug addict, you know, whatever drug of choice you're addicted to, you know, the more you take, the more you need, the more you crave. Wow. You know, I don't uh really so so the so that's that stimuli becomes addictive. Yeah, it's what it's doing when you're sitting in from what I could glean from this is when you're sitting in front of those machines for hours and upon hours on end. And trust me, John, I've seen people in there where, you know, I went home at 2 o'clock in the morning, came back at 7 o'clock in the evening, and the same people were sitting at the same machines wearing the same clothes they were the day before, you know, when I left. So we're talking about, you know, extreme exposure. But when, you, when you're exposed to particular frequencies, uh, and and this is not even the weaponized stuff. You know, this is just, you know, the out there everyday stuff that you're exposed to. It, it tends to reroute the neural pathways in your brain. And in the case of, you know, the slot machines, the way they work is it, it stimulates the brain to release a chemical that um, mimics Valium. It's almost the same chemical composition as Valium. Wow, that is something else. Well, um, that is that is interesting. And so, once you, all right. So now you've got your head full of that knowledge, and and you you know what's happening. And so you moved out of the gaming industry. And when did you shift into level nine, so to speak? Um, Actually, I started reporting. I started putting out reports in 2012, and um, uh, I kind of got very disenfranchised with YouTube. So I went out and created a website. And on YouTube, you know, I'll, I'll still put out, you know, introductions to reports, but urge people to get off that platform and go to another platform to read or listen to or to watch, you know, the full report. But, um, you know, I, I started back then with um, a lot of technology, you know, just delving into a lot of technology and systems and government to a very large degree, how they weren't telling us the full story. Actually, they weren't telling us anything that was true that was going on, you know, even way back then. And then that led me into, um, you know, investigating artificial intelligence, the global information grid, the IoT or Internet of Things, how they're using and weaponizing synthetic biology, how they're creating artificial life forms with, um, you know, triple helix strand DNA, which is pretty 
time. I mean, that's pretty bizarre because they, they have the capability of typing DNA sequencing into a computer where it's synthesized instead of actually cutting and splicing DNA from one biological organism to another. So in effect, they're creating a type of GMO, genetically modified organisms. And they have the capability now to deliver these DNA, DNA sequences over the Internet. And, you know, I was just before, you know, I got on the phone with you, I was reading some other articles regarding DNA computers. And one of the, uh, one of the paragraphs in the article I was reading, well, you know, it says, don't fear DNA computers because DNA is so expensive to synthesize. Well, let me just tell you something. The base material used to synthesize DNA is sugar. And $25, and, you know, I did this report back in 2015, but $25, according to uh, um, Sinberg, um, which is um, an artificial DNA think tank and R&D, yeah. Center is enough to make a copy of every human genome on the planet. $25 of sugar. Now, why in the world would somebody want to do a thing like that? Synthesize DNA? Well, record every possible combination and store it somewhere. Oh, no, 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 no. That's just, a, you know, that's just to give you an example you know, oh, uh, gotcha. Okay, good. The, the base material, you know, $25 worth of sugar is enough to synthesize enough to, to, uh, DNA to, to make a copy of every human genome on the planet. That's what I'm getting so at. Just, is there yeah. anything to suggest that somebody wants to do that, or were you just using that as an example? When you tossed it in there, I thought, well, wait a minute, is that next, or is it already a done deal? <laughs> no, I was just using it. As an example, okay, good, good. but you know, along those same lines, have you heard of Synthrox Corporation? I don't know if you've come across that at all, but um, that's another synthetic biology R and D think tank corporation that's engineered a bacteria with six DNA base pairs versus the four base pairs, you know, found in nature. I know what you mean now. Yeah. Yeah, so all life form on Earth cur currently consists of only four base pairs. And the way they accomplished this was they used the standard building blocks of naturally occurring or biological DNA, the ATGC, and then added two new in vivo replications of a synthetic DNA base pair that they labeled X and Y. And this resembles nothing that's ever been seen on Earth before. So they've created a triple helix DNA life form. A triple helix mm -hmm. DNA life form. Mm -hmm. well, I think I'll just... And when you, go ahead. Yeah, when, yeah. You, when you get into triple helix, that uses three instead of two nuclear...